On this trip through the digestive system, we will study digestion, the enzymatic breakdown of food to components that can be absorbed, and absorption, the movement of nutrients, salts, and water across the GI epithelium into blood or lymph. The carbohydrates that enter the small intestine for digestion include starch, its breakdown products from salivary amylase digestion, and the dietary disaccharides, sucrose, table sugar, lactose, milk sugar, and maltose, grain sugar. Drag starch to amylase to begin. Pancreatic amylase continues the breakdown of starch in the lumen. It is identical to salivary amylase and maximally active at about pH 7. Since only monosaccharides are absorbed, the breakdown products of starch and the disaccharides must be digested further. Brush border enzymes accomplish this job. Click an epithelial cell to continue. A brush border enzyme called glucoamylase that lies close to the sodium glucose cotransporter breaks down maltose and maltotriose. Drag maltotriose to its enzyme. A brush border enzyme called dextrinase breaks down small branched segments of starch. It also lies close to the sodium glucose cotransporter. Drag limit dextrin to its enzyme. Brush border enzymes also break down sucrose and lactose. Click the brush border membrane. Use what you know about enzyme names to drag sucrose and lactose to their respective enzymes. Drag glucose to a transporter. Most nutrients are absorbed by transepithelial transport moving first into the intestinal epithelial cells at their luminal surface, then out at their basal surface. Glucose and galactose enter intestinal cells, co-transported with sodium, by the process of secondary active transport. Notice that both glucose and galactose use the same transporter. Drag fructose to its transporter. Fructose enters intestinal cells on a fructose-specific transporter by the process of facilitated diffusion. Click the membrane to continue. All monosaccharides leave epithelial cells on a common transporter by the process of facilitated diffusion. Drag a monosaccharide to the transporter. Notice that glucose, galactose, and fructose use the same transporter. They enter capillaries for transport in the blood. Ingested proteins, peptides from pepsin digestion, proteins from sloughed cells, and enzymes enter the small intestine for digestion. Trypsin, chymotrypsin, and carboxypeptidase, the major pancreatic proteases, continue protein digestion in the lumen. These enzymes are maximally active at about pH 7. Drag a protein to trypsin to begin.
Trypsin and chymotrypsin cleave proteins into smaller peptides and some single amino acids. Carboxypeptidase cleaves one amino acid at a time from the carboxyl end of a protein. Dipeptides and tripeptides as well as single amino acids are absorbed. Click an epithelial cell to continue. Aminopeptidase and dipeptidase continue the digestion of peptides. Drag a peptide to aminopeptidase. Click the membrane to continue. Many single amino acids enter intestinal cells co-transported with sodium by the process of secondary active transport. There are several different amino acid transporters. Transport of some amino acids does not require sodium. Most proteins absorbed as di and tripeptides. Small peptide co-transporters use secondary active transport some driven by sodium, others by hydrogen ions. Click a tripeptide inside the cell. Di and tripeptides are broken down to amino acids inside the cells. Click the basal lateral membrane to continue. Some amino acids leave epithelial cells by diffusion. The more hydrophobic the amino acid, the more likely it is to lead by diffusion. Other amino acids leave cells by facilitated diffusion or co-transport with sodium. Triglycerides are the most abundant dietary fat. They are made from a glycerol molecule to which three fatty acids are attached. Fatty acids may be short, medium, or long chains of carbon and hydrogen. Almost all fat digestion occurs in the small intestine. Pancreatic lipase breaks down triglycerides. It is maximally active at about pH 7. Since fat is insoluble in water, it tends to aggregate in large drops, leaving little surface area for lipase to work. Segmentation in the small intestine breaks the large drops into smaller drops and disperses those drops throughout the chyme. Click the large fat globule. Segmentation in the small intestine does to chyme what shaking does to a bottle of oil and vinegar salad dressing. It disperses the fat layer into the aqueous layer. Notice what happens when you set the jar down after shaking it. Click the bottle to continue. Bile salts in the intestine keep the small fat droplets in solution by a process called emulsification. The function of bile salts is directly related to their structure. They are hydrophobic on one side, their steroid core, and hydrophilic on the other side, primarily due to the presence of hydroxyl groups. Drag bile salts to the smaller drops. Keeping the small fat droplets in solution provides a large surface area for lipase action. Drag lipase to the small droplet. Lipase digests triglycerides to monoglycerides and free fatty acids.
Drag a bile salt to the breakdown product. Another function of bile salts is to surround the cleaved products, forming tiny droplets called micelles. Micelles are a million times smaller than emulsified fat droplets. When micelles are in close proximity to the cell membrane, monoglycerides and fatty acids move out of them to enter intestinal cells by simple diffusion through the lipid bilayer. Click a micelle. Triglycerides are reassembled inside the cells and packaged into chylomicrons that are coated with lipoproteins to keep them emulsified. Drag a chylomicron to the basal surface of the cell. Chylomicrons leave the cell by exocytosis. Since they are too large to pass through the basement membrane of capillaries, they enter lymph vessels called lacteals. Click a fatty acid inside the intestinal cell. Short-chain and medium-chain fatty acids are absorbed by simple diffusion and can directly enter capillaries. However, the normal diet contains few fatty acids of these chain lengths. Cells and secretions of the large intestine have no digestive functions. Resident bacteria break down some of the indigestible carbohydrates and use the released nutrients. These bacteria synthesize some B-complex vitamins and significant amounts of vitamin K that are absorbed. Vitamin K is essential for liver synthesis of some blood clotting proteins. The colon absorbs small amounts of salt and water as feces pass through it. That completes our third and final trip through the GI tract. Here's a summary of what we've covered. Digestion occurs primarily in the small intestine by action of pancreatic enzymes. Absorption of most salt, water, and nutrients occurs in the small intestine. Most nutrients are absorbed by transepithelial transport. Monosaccharides and amino acids enter the bloodstream. Most fat enters the lymph. To test your knowledge, click the quiz button to go to the self-quiz.